Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino and I want to show you something which is exceedingly simple yet which for me just a moment ago was impossible to do and that is simply type spaces from one end to the other of the typewriter and then type enter and then have it return to the very beginning. Now the trouble was that the read write head would move only for a moment and then the whole thing would extremely resist further movement. I actually thought that the error is in this read write head. That was a total mistake. It was not. And anyway, I disassembled it. Then the parts fell apart and it took me an eternity to put them back together. And finally I discovered upon opening the machine that the electromotor over here, which is driving that belt, had apparently rust under this driving wheel, which is really turning the whole mechanism here. And then I, yeah, oiled the entire appliance there with fine mechanics oil. I reassembled everything and things were fixed. And this is what I'm going to show you now in this video, like in detail how this was done. The most adventurous part was actually reassembling this thing. I made a big mistake by not photographing it when I first took it apart. Then I touched something, then everything just went bang. <laughs> and there I was in a soup of Japanese wheels. But given that nowhere else there seem to be any schematics of the read write head, it might be actually interesting for you to see its internal workings should you actually ever have to look into it. And now without further ado, let's have a look as to the composition of the read write head. To disassemble the read write head evidently you have to remove the two screws but also know this little spring on the upper left corner holding on to a sort of tooth of the read write head this little spring is assembled so that it stays in the upper cap once you lift it it will not clip itself back into place when you put things together and you need to pull it over to that tooth the assembly inside itself looks just like that. Notice this long weird lever thing. It's one part connected to a little spring. It is this spring which may catapult it out of place. Also, if you have wiggled the screws too much, a little metal part may come off which is holding the screws. Just shift it in from the side. Should your wheels be catapulted out, this is what the lower layer looks like. And once you assemble the part all together back again, here you can see that this little spring will not automatically attach itself to that tooth of the read right head. And that is what it should look like once you have again successfully pulled it into place. So that is the read right head of the EP44. In order to disassemble the typewriter, you are obviously removing the batteries from here, so they are just not in the way, and you are unscrewing it here, 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 and here. There are no screws under the feet, so this is actually quite user-friendly, but when you do so, it opens like a book, so it's not something you lift and detach, it's something that you lift and turn around and they stay connected over a flat ribbon cable. When you unscrew the five screws at the bottom of the typewriter, then basically you can turn it around and then you can open it like a book. And here I discovered also the culprit for why the typewriter would not move the read right head into position. It is this wheel here around which this part is normally fixed. I just unfixed it for repairing it. And it was this little electromotor down here, which quite apparently due to rust had stopped moving 
smoothly through entire revolutions. Like it was moving this plastic wheel here till a bit and then ah, this doesn't want to. It still does it a little bit with difficulty, but now the situation is considerably better. I wiggled it a little bit free and also used these tweezers here to just force a revolution where it was not possible. The whole thing I did wetten a little bit in fine mechanics oil, as you can see here. It did absorb it. So this is oil specifically for sewing machines and the like. And after oiling it, and after unhooking it from the driving mechanism, I was essentially doing this in order to, yeah, free it up a little bit. I'm not saying that this is a technically absolutely brilliant solution, but I am saying that this is a solution which again allowed it to do full revolutions. And you can even see on the plastic wheel where things were getting difficult. These are these darker stains. This is where the motor was actively resisting to move further. All right, I think now that I have been, you know, trying to make it move more smoothly for a good while now, and after it has absorbed quite a couple of drops of oil, I think there might be a chance now for this whole assembly to work again properly. And the proof is in the pudding, which is why I shall now hook back this driving belt on the upper part. I may have to do that without you. Let's see, can I or can I not? Eh, worked. Okay, and now let's see, can you or can you not move this? Still a little bit resisting, but by far not the thing it used to be just a couple of moments ago. I shall now assemble everything and see whether the typewriter is now able to move the head across the entire space here. Actually interesting, the rust seems to be on the lower part of this wheel. For when I really forced movement with this thing, then the spinning of the motor actually ejected some of the oil to splatter around here and mop it up. And the thing is that it it's a reddish splatter. In other words, this is the thing which contains the rust. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in business. The typewriter is once again able to serve as a terminal for a basic interpreter running on an emulated PDP-8 which itself is running on an Arduino Mega. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you're not a subscriber yet, consider becoming one. Until we meet again, I wish you a wonderful time. Thank you for watching. See you hopefully soon. And goodbye.